With still more media attention on Ukraine and a possible Russian invasion, such as new Russian military movements and large-scale war games being held in Belarus with Russia, I think it's worth taking one more closer look. Ukraine's navy is virtually non-existent, with their sole frigate completely outarmed and in port for an overhaul. Their air force is a tiny fraction of the size of Russia, and their tank force is also outgunned and outnumbered. That leaves one weapon that Ukraine has that can either make or break any invasion, the ATGM, or Anti-Tank Guided Missile. They alone cannot stop an invasion, but they have the ability to make it extremely costly for Russia. Ukraine's military mostly consists of older Russian and Soviet equipment, all of which Russia has, they have upgraded versions of, and in much larger numbers. So in any head-to-head -head fight between the two, Ukraine could not win. But those ATGMs, as well as manpads, which are handheld air defense missiles, are relatively inexpensive compared to the tanks and aircraft they destroy. They also require very little maintenance and support, and they're easily concealed, making them a real threat to any unsuspecting enemy. These two weapons played a role in defeating the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in the 1980s, where a much weaker force was able to take on a superpower. Then again, Russia suffered heavily at the hands of these anti-tank weapons during the First Chechen War, where they lost hundreds of armored vehicles, including T-72 and T-80 tanks. So how could Ukraine use them? But first, real quick, the video is sponsored by Lord of the Board. It's a free-to-play, friendly backgammon game that you can play anywhere at any time. Backgammon's a real old, traditional, real addictive multiplayer board game, and by combining it into an app with a large player community, along with leaderboards, tournaments, and more, Lord of the Board makes it more fun, more addictive, and even more exciting. And if you're not already familiar with Backgammon, there's a reason it's been around and so popular for centuries. I used to play Backgammon as a kid, and I always loved the element of strategy. And now, with the app, Lord of the Board is my favorite game recently, and bringing back a lot of memories. Although, without having to have to worry about trying to find someone to play with, setting it up, and as often in my case, arguing about the rules. Also, something I really enjoyed with Lord of the Board was all the extras they have, like the unique table designs, tournaments, and prizes. So go and check it out. Click the link down in the description, download Lord of the Board for free, and you'll receive 500 free coins. The game is totally free to play for both iOS and Android, and you get daily bonuses, and it's so cool to compete with players around the world. So go give it a try. As I've said, I've always loved the game, and I'm sure you will too. If you want to beat me, click the link down in the description and download that app. Good luck, and I'll see you there. ATGMs and manpads are similar. Each can be carried and operated by either a single operator or a small team. It fires a missile, and they're easily hidden. Manpads today, in a war with Russia, would be less effective than they were back in the 1980s. There's been improvements to countermeasures and tactics to counter them, along with things like targeting pods, which allow the aircraft to fly much higher and still hit their targets accurately, which keeps them out of reach of the short-range manpads. The real effective weapon would be the ATGM. Anti-tank weapons have constantly gone back and forth with tank armor to have the advantage. Tanks were originally the ultimate vehicle. Then came heat, or high-explosive anti-tank shaped charge warheads, most famously the German Panzerschreck and US M1 Bazooka. The warhead forms a jet that can pierce through tank armor. Then came composite and reactive armor on tanks, which greatly reduced heat rounds effectiveness. To get around this, tandem charge warheads, which have two stages to defeat reactive armor, as well as top attack ATGMs, which will hit the tank from above where the armor is thinner, again gave the ATGM the advantage. And now, more recently, countries have been developing active protection systems that can either jam or confuse incoming ATGMs, or fire a projectile that destroys it before it hits. But these are extremely expensive, and they require sensitive sensors around the vehicle, such as radars, thermal cameras, lights, etc. And they also run the risk of collateral damage, so they do have their drawbacks. And now, the latest generation ATGMs often utilize multiple forms of guidance, which makes countermeasures like jamming much less effective. But Ukraine has a large selection of ATGMs, with over a dozen different types. Everything from the much older and less effective Soviet 9K-111 to the newer, more capable 9K-115-2. And even their own domestically built, large caliber skiff and US and UK ATGMs like Javelin and MBT Law. Many of the older systems, like that 9K-111 and 9M-113, with their single heat warhead would be much less effective against modern Russian tanks with their reactive armor, as mentioned earlier. However, they would still be very useful against less heavily armored vehicles. They are also wire-guided, and they require the launcher to remain in place and point it at the target until it hits, which runs the risk of them being spotted and fired upon. The Skiff, Javelin, and MBT Law all have that tandem heat warheads, making them much more effective. 
For comparison, both the Skiff and Javelin are estimated to have roughly twice the penetration capability as at 9K 111 and 113, giving them the ability to compete with the most heavily armored Russian tanks. They are also fire and forget, which means the operators don't have to hang around. They can launch and then retreat to safety before being spotted. Ukraine has an unknown number of Skiff missiles, but over 700 US Javelin missiles with over 100 launchers, and some reports saying over 1200 missiles with 380 launchers, and over 1000 UK MBT laws. The Javelin has been the most widely discussed in Western media. You may notice how its tube is slanted slightly upward. This is due to its flight profile, which first climbs up into the sky, up to 160 meters, and then down onto its target from above. This makes the Javelin much more effective, as tanks are typically not as heavily armored on top. Also, newer, lighter components have extended its range out to 4,000 meters, or 2.5 miles, which is pretty long for an ATGM. And it's also performed great in combat, with an extremely high reliability rate, and destroying numerous Iraqi tanks and armored vehicles in 2003, as well as even against heavy machine gun emplacements and bunkers in Afghanistan. And this brings up a good point. ATGMs, which stand for anti-tank guided missiles, are useful against much more than just tanks and other vehicles. The fact that they can pack a real punch, along with its long range and ability to precisely hit a target makes them valuable for other missions as well. It can fill a role between the accuracy but lack of power of heavy machine guns, and the powerful but less accurate mortars. So, ATGMs are a powerful weapon, and for Ukraine, who has a defense budget roughly one-tenth the size of Russia, it's an affordable equalizer. Prices obviously vary, but a roughly $100,000 ATGM has the potential to destroy a tank that costs 50 times that. However, while these ATGMs are easily conceivable and operate with minimal crew, Russia has developed a large drone reconnaissance arsenal. These can scout out ahead and spot the movements of ATGM teams getting into position, which can then be attacked. And when these teams have to move into position to attack is when they're most vulnerable. Ukraine's land border with Russia is nearly 2,000 kilometers long, and another 1,000 kilometers with Belarus, making it impossible for Ukraine to cover every possible route beforehand, so they would have to react to Russian advances by moving into position afterward. So, while the ATGMs are a serious threat to Russia's military, they cannot win the war alone, only make it more costly. And for Ukraine, the hope is too costly for Russia to continue, or even start in the first place.